Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of On the Rise with Candice Cordelia. I'm your host, Candice Cordelia. Thank you so much for dropping by. Today's guest is quite honestly fabulous. All of our guests are she's particularly wonderful. Her name is Pearl Quaze, and she is in The Lion King on Broadway, playing the role of Nala, one of my favorite characters in all of fiction. So please do welcome her on today's show. Pearl, how are you? I'm wonderful, thanks. How are you, Candace? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for asking. And it's truly a pleasure to be able to talk with you today. I saw The Lion King. It is phenomenal. It's my first time seeing it, believe it or not. And I know it's been out since 1997 on Broadway. So it's been a while, but I'm finally caught up. And I'm really grateful I got to see it this year because your role as Nala, you are stupendous. So congratulations. Thank and thank you so much for entertaining us. You know, it's it's been quite a ride, it seems, for you getting from where you first started to going on Broadway. And I understand you just acquired the role not too long ago. It was announced in May and we're now in July. So talk to us about that moment when you first found out that you were going to play Nala on Broadway. Ooh, that was uh, I, one of those moments in life where you're like, okay, I'm gonna remember this forever. I was at the doctor's office and I got a call and I was in that office screaming with the doctor. Um, we sh I shared the news with him and it was just, yeah, surreal. I think it still is a little surreal um, that I'm playing the role every day. I was an understudy before, but it's just, it's been amazing. There's an amazing cast. Um, it's just a lot of support and it's just been beautiful. Yes, how has, and thank you for mentioning the fact that you did play this role previously and you also the, the role in Madrid and as well, you played other roles within The Lion King, but of course this is your first time playing Nala on Broadway. How has acquiring this role really changed your life both professionally and personally? Um, well, yes, I did start playing the role as an understudy here in the States. In Madrid, I hadn't started yet. And how has it changed just my life professionally? I've had to depend on myself to show up every single day as the best version of myself, even more so than I was before. Um, because now it's it's my name over there, you know, you know, before as an understudy, it was like, okay, it, you know, you have, you, you're okay. You're like, okay, it's, at least it's, it's not my name. Especially, I'm very reserved as a person. And so I've had to be okay with being seen and, and stand in that light and, you know, know that I worked for it and this is what happens. Um, but yeah, I've, I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed it. I'm enjoying it every night and it's allowed me to express myself even more um, as an artist and, try new things and you know see how that goes and with my acting as well i was a sing i've always just been a singer you know i've always taken myself as a singer but i've had to sort of grow into okay we're acting as well and pick up skills along the way i'm learning from cast members around me so it's just really it's been a growing experience oh that's lovely and you know there are a lot of rigors still that go into as you know in playing an understudy part and having that as a part of your day-to-day -day life. But now, as you've definitely told us, you know, being having your name in lights, having your name in the playbook and, and having this role is quite a large step from being an understudy. So what is it about going from understudy to having this large role of Nala on Broadway? What were some of the things that you really had to work more on? Or was there anything that you felt in your understudy preparation that really helped uh, once you gained this role as Nala? Um, I think I'd say my physicality. It's, you know, as someone who was a singer, I never thought I'd have to be this athletic on stage. Mm -hmm. And as an understudy, I learned that, okay, you know, you, you gotta be prepared because you never know when you're gonna need to do Nala. Now I know when I need to do Nala and it's every day. So I've had to, you know, prepare myself every single day and condition my body to do the job because I don't want to stand in the way of the art because that I feel is a gift that we're giving to people that come to see the show and, you know, improving physically and, you know, with the movements and with the stunts that are being done, you know, you sort of have to work on yourself and be like, okay, 
have the courage to get better and better, you know. Um, so yeah, that's that was major, the physicality. That's awesome. That's really awesome. And you also recently stated that you're quite reserved. You know, Nala is very headstrong and she has a specific way about her and has become such a beloved character. And, you know, she's not, I wouldn't call Nala reserved, <laughs> maybe in certain situations. But are there any similarities that you found between yourself and Nala as time goes on and you're really honing into this role and, and getting to know her more as a character? Oh, yes. Uh, she is as tough as nails. Um, she is also, I think her story, I resonate with her story so much. Um, she's a very, very strong woman. And those are aspects, even though I am reserved, those are aspects that I recognize in myself that I see in the character. You know, even the song Shadowland, it speaks to me so much, you know, that she left her home to go and look for a better future, to go and, you know, find a solution elsewhere. I left my home and every night I get to sing and just think about my family that I've left behind and what, is, what a beautiful sacrifice that is. And it's so worth it because, you know, you grow as a person. So yeah, the way that she grows and she has softness to her as well. Um, I really identify with that and how she comes in tune with her childlike self when she sees Simba again. Those are aspects of myself that I see in her. So yeah, I resonate with this character so much um, that you know it's a pleasure to play it because I get to express parts of myself that in day-to-day -day life, I wouldn't you know, have any reason to sort of access and express. Mm. And you mentioned Homeland, and I understand that you are from South Africa, from Durban, South Africa. What is the significance like, you know, given your African heritage, to be able to play Nala and knowing that the story it takes place in the African Pride Land, there's so much pride within the story itself. What does that felt like for you to be able to represent your certain heritage and to represent being African and, and having a lot of the African roots rooted within this story in The Lion King? Ooh, um, it's, there's a lot of significance in that. Um, this is the first time that a South African person has, you know, been the principal Nala on Broadway. And to have that be me is incredible. I say, oh my goodness. Um, but, Having the origins in, in South Africa just, I feel, enriches the story. You know, I come from a perspective that's probably different to a lot of people that I meet in my day to day. And I feel like it brings something else to the story that, you know, people aren't used to. So, yeah, I think it just adds, it just adds um, to the experience and what I'm able to give to people because I understand what the words mean, you know. Um, the song is has got a lot of Zulu in it. And I grew up in Guazulu Natal. And when I say those words, it's almost as if I'm saying them back to people back home that I left there, that, you know, I will come back, but I'll come back with this victory, you know? And yeah, it's, it's such a powerful moment in the show and for me internally. Mm, and the whole, when I went to see it, the whole audience, we felt that we really did. And it was a very powerful moment and very special. So thank you very much for your candor. And speaking of music, you know, I grew up loving The Lion King, watching the movie for the first time. It's such a generational tale. And to see it go from screen to stage makes it even that much more special. Are there any other songs from The Lion King that you really loved and resonated with? Oh, I love They Live in You, the reprise. I love it so much. I love that moment of Simba coming back to himself. I, I really enjoy it. Whenever I'm between my own scenes and I am standing backstage, I always take a moment and I watch, you know, Sidi Mange singing that on stage and Simba just kneeling, you know, by the water. And it's just, it's such a beautiful you know, beautiful song. I also love, which is, you know, very strange. I love Rafiki Mons. 
I think this is all coming from a perspective of someone who's done Rafiki as an understudy. Um, those are two particular scenes that are my favorite outside of Shadowland, of course. But those are very powerful, raw and emotional scenes where, you know, the whole musical is it's just spectacular. It's beautiful. You know, there's life-size elephants in the room and there's, there's this and there's that. But those moments in particular are very, very human. They, it's almost as if the show is stripped down and we get to forget about the spectacle and just be human in those moments. So, yeah. Yes, shout out to Rafiki too, one of my favorite <laughs> characters in the, whole, in the whole musical, of course, Nala, yourself, Simba, but Rafiki, I, I absolutely loved, absolutely loved. And it's a pleasure just seeing everything come together and seeing all the characters sync up and, and really have fun. It looks like everyone's having fun and enjoying themselves on stage. You know, we're into the 25th anniversary of The Lion King on Broadway, which is absolutely incredible to have it be one of the longest standing Broadway shows. And as of current, the highest grossing musical of all time. You know, there's so much history just woven within not just the story, but the fact of having the Lion King on Broadway itself. What is it like to be a part of this significance when it comes to the Lion King's history on Broadway in New York? It's an honor, really. It's, it's such an honor because as an artist, you hope to get some recognition or you hope to touch lives and you hope to have something a moment of significance that you can look back on and be like, oh, that moment was beautiful. We get to have that eight times a week and it's been going on for 25 years. That, there's, I don't think there's any one word to explain what that experience is like, um, but it's an honor. I, I would say that it's an honor. And then to get there and be able to sing in my native language in a different continent, in the highest grossing, what in, it's, it's beautiful. And the experience in itself is beautiful. We still have cast members who were there from the beginning. Mm. And that in itself is an honor. And for her to just be here in this moment when I, when I become Nala and share this moment, oh my goodness. It's, yeah, it's just an honor. Oh my goodness. Well, it's an honor to watch you and the other cast members just shine on the stage. And I could only assume that being a part of this production and encompassing the role of Nala is opening up a lot of doors for you. So once the time should end when you are no longer in this role, what are some of your career goals going forward? Going forward, I would love to do some television and write some more music. I am, I do write music, but I haven't really released anything yet um so that's in the works and i'm hoping to sort of delve into that a lot more um yeah but for the most part if anything this journey has taught me is that you could plan until the crows come home cows come home but at the end of the day i just do the best in the present and the best will come that is meant to come in the future i guess um, but yeah i'm just being in the present, I couldn't have planned to be where I am today if I tried. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to keep singing as much as possible and expressing myself in the truest way. That's all. Oh, that sounds lovely. And I have to ask, speaking of television, is there anyone in particular you would like to work with, whether it's another actor, producer, writer, anyone in mind for the future? Hmm. There is an actor, South African actor, that is rising right now that in the future I think she'd be wonderful to work with because I'm very excited about where she's going. Uh, Tusom Beidu is her name. And she is working with Viola Davis right now in the, well, the movie's coming out soon, The Warrior King, Woman King, um, about these, this, these women in Africa fighting. Um, they're like soldiers and that's a beautiful um, sort of direction I'd like to go in. So the Viola Davis is all, you know, in there. But yeah, her specifically, I would love to work with her. 
Very nice. We'll have to look into her work. And of course, we'll continue to follow everything that you're doing, Pearl. Congratulations on all of your success that you have currently and going forward. It was so lovely to speak with you. And thank you so much for being a part of my show here for Broadway World. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And thank you all for watching On the Rise with Candace Cornelia. And I can't wait to present our next guest with you on the next episode. Until then, take care.